Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Reston Community Center. Please take a seat. And that, you know, th that resonates with stories from my ancestors. Um, uh, and, and so I think part of it is about that education. But the other piece um, that I think is really important is something that ties to when the Yale professor came in and started having that conversation with the Yale professor. To a certain extent, I actually don't really care that much, and I don't really know that much about how much racism is in someone else's heart. What I care about more are the institutions and the actions that I can perceive. And so if we focus exclusively on the racism in people's hearts, I think it is too easy for people to say, oh, but I don't have racism in my heart. I'm not part of the problem. I'm moving on. But I think that we need to look at those institutions, we need to look at the things that are out there, things that are perceptible, things that are measurable, and figure out where we make, where we push to fix things. Uh, so I think we need to be better educated, we need to get those stories out there, we need to understand our history, but we need to move forward on those institutions and the structures that are in place. And at this moment in time, we have the, we know, because you saw 13 plus time, um, this, the system, if we get enough judges on the Supreme Court, they've already cut the Voting Act back. Eventually, they can revisit a lot of things. And the people in the streets, we've, we've got Black Lives Matter, whatever, and people marching in the street, but what do we do? And right now, we're, we're, I think we've painted ourselves into a corner. What do we do? If they get a six to three court, we're gonna have to hold our breath every time there is a case before the Supreme Court. Because our space is gonna get smaller and smaller. Because eventually, we, they can take away totally our right to vote. Because when, when, he, when they changed that, they said, they didn't see any discrimination anymore. So if they can't see what we feel, we've got a real problem. But that's where you, that's where you use the tactics. That's where the, 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 the comments were made by so many of you today about we know a whole lot more about their game than mm -hmm. they know about ours. Mm -hmm. So use their rules. Yeah. Use their rules. Yeah. And if that means vote, win the Senate, stack the court, because that's what they do. That's exactly, and they wouldn't apologize for it. You see it today. They would not apologize for it. Well, I think that that reminds me, and this is why you all are all engaged, all politics is local. Like, we definitely have to be focused at the federal level. But when it comes to things like vote, voter suppression, we should depend on the federal government to protect us. But who is actually in charge of the voting laws right. locally? And who are making those decisions? It starts there. So that, and we sometimes get we we focus so much on the federal, and I don't disagree with you. But I also think about like the difference of voting in Fairfax County versus the difference that my friends who are activists experience in Milwaukee, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're we are waiting an hour or two at the government time, which is. It's not that bad. You know, as my pastor said, like, my ancestors waited hundreds of years. Like, I can wait a couple hours. And, and that's just, you know, early voting, right? We're talking about the only time you have to vote, waiting five or six hours in line in predominantly black areas. The federal government has a role in making sure that doesn't happen, but the local government put the laws in place. What's happening now in Texas, where the governor says, there's only one drop box allowed per county. You know, of course the government should be, the federal government should be protecting us, but the governor is is doing their pressure. So the whole, I, I usually come to this given most of the truth, but I have hope that the local leaders, if we elect the right local leaders and hold them accountable to, yep. to having a racial equity and a racial justice lens, Maybe there comes a day that we don't need the Supreme Court to decide our rights. Exactly. 
maybe that comes to time. I'm not saying we shouldn't focus on that. I just, it will depress me too much to think that that's our only thing. <laughs> well, well, I mean, so <laughs> for the last 20, for the last 20 years, at least the last 20 years, those people have focused on stacking local and state elections yeah. to allow this to happen. And we're talking like hyper, hyper local. We're yes. talking about right. school boards and exactly. libraries. That's where all the rules are. It, it builds 100% right. And the thing is, democracy is not a spectator sport. It's and right. too often, people sit there like, how that happen? You have to educate yourself and pay attention. Because now it's like, oh, and we're rushing to hopefully, you know, get out there and vote, do everything you need to do this time. Playing vote, but stay active. You and have to know what's happening. That one. The people yeah. before us did. Yeah, you know, we're standing on the shoulder of a lot of people. And I was sharing something in one of my classrooms. People didn't die to vote. People were murdered so that we could vote. And not only so they could vote, so they could participate in policy. Yes. Right? Yes. And we forget that we this message of voting, but we forget the participation in policy making yes. is so Important. critical. And they died for that too, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> they died for that too. And you see the phone calls um, that have been going out to voters. Now that's that. Once you scare people, how do you get them back? Yeah. Okay. Right. So, are there any questions from the audience? We've had such a rich discussion. I always lose track of time. I'm so grateful um, for all of you and your leadership and your truth and your honesty and that you're not filtered, right? Um, and I just so appreciate uh, the context that you put things in. And I, I want us to remember we're all in Fairfax County. We have leadership that we can hold accountable. Like we have things that we can do locally. Uh, there's controversy going on right now with uh, racial equity education being pulled down from the Fairfax County website. And the, the, and that is something we need to pay attention to, right? So this is not some distant thing that's happening with an administration that's trying to do it on the federal level. It's happening right here. And I hope our call to action is to keep our eye on the federal. We can do both things, right? That's actually, I think, the beauty of black people. We've been able to do a lot of different things. <laughs> Um, and we can pay attention at the local and federal level, and even what's happening in our community center, right? Like, how are we being inclusive and embracing diversity and actually creating places where people have power to make, make decisions? Mm -hmm. Well, we have, we have an opportunity here in Fairfax County because there are 92 different boards and commissions. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the makeup, nobody knows the makeup of those boards and commissions. Right. But there's only a handful of us that are participating in those. Yeah. And they are very, very powerful. They're they're making policy and moving things ahead on those boards and commissions. So if you have an opportunity, get involved. Thank you all so much for your time. And your time. Thank you. Thank you for saying.